Hello, welcome to Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club. I'm Phil Hayward, I'm the Head Academy Physiotherapist here, and come on in. This is the first team dressing room where the players prepare for training. Come through the dressing room. This is where we have the contrast baths. Following training, the players will turn to be five times, so five lots of hot, cold, hot, cold between the two, just to get that, really get that blood flowing through and get everything flushed out of the system. Steve Kemp, Head of Medical Services, Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club. My role is to highlight the players at most risk, address these risks, and then hopefully return them to sport and reduce the injuries in the football club. So we're in the doctor's office. Here one of the players is having um, a scan of his patella tendon using the dual screen function. Everything that we do has an element of science in it really. Birds, singers, lorries, guitars, trumpeters, cats, lawn mowers, vuvuzelas, all make sounds. We can hear them because their frequency is between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Although, old grannies sometimes can't hear everything. Anything higher than 20,000 hertz is called ultrasound and sounds like this. Unless you're a bat. But although you can't hear ultrasound, I can't hear anything. thanks to physicists, you can use it to scan pregnant women, and in this case, footballers' knees. We're all trained in ultrasound. So I'm just putting the gel on. The gel just provides a medium through which the sound waves are able to be conducted. So at the top there, and then you can see your tendon coming down. Just a little dark area off the bottom of your kneecap there, where that pain's coming from. So pain started coming on gradually after training. It would be like a bit sore. But like I'd struggle to like fully flex my knee. And then like it just kept getting worse and worse. We're very fortunate to have this type of equipment here, and not many football clubs actually have it. In a normal situation, you tend to have pain and you're sort of making assumptions as to what's going on in the, in the tissues, uh, whereas we've got the facility to look on site. The method of ultrasound is just the sound waves, so it's actually sending the sound waves through and look as they reflect back, they give a different picture. And then we can we know what we're actually scanning through um, the different images we see. Ultrasound waves are sent into the body. The useful thing about sound is that it reflects. Hello, 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 hello. So when the transducer sends sound waves into a knee, some of the sound is reflected and some absorbed, depending on whether it hits skin, muscle, water or bone. These echoes arrive back at the transducer at different times and are analysed by the computer and converted into a moving image. The different tissues within the body will transmit the sound waves at a different speed and reflect back at a different intensity. If you stood very close to a wall and said something, you may wouldn't hear that echo particularly well. If you stood a long way back, you'd hear a time lapse between you saying something, hitting the wall and bouncing back to you, and you could that be measurable and you'd be able to accurately calculate your distance from the wall. So this is very similar, so you can calculate the depth and type of tissue depending on what the intensity of the sound wave that you see back on the screen there. The transducer is made up of lots of little crystals aligned in there. Some crystals sending out the waves downwards and then some receiving the information and the reflection or the echo back. Why use the gel? Without the gel, most of the sound waves wouldn't penetrate the knee but would be reflected off the skin surface. The greatest benefit of ultrasound is, um, is it's real time. You can actually see the muscle moving, you can see the muscle contracting, you can see the muscle stretching. No health risk at all so we can use it for long periods of time without any undue risk to the player. You can see the different layers of tissue are shown. The transducer will be up there looking down. So here's his skin, subcutaneous fat layers, the kneecap there, which is the sort of lighter area. And then his tendon is this nice sort of grainy longitudinal tissue there. And this sort of darker area is where someone's a bit of a problem with his patella tendon, whereby through overuse, he's just had some inflammation there. It's become a chronic problem and he's now got poor quality tendon tissue in there. Ultrasound is great for looking at footballers' knees. <whistles> Knee injuries are all too common. <sighs> and by looking into the tissues using ultrasound, physios can not only help players get better quicker,
but change their training program so the problem doesn't develop in the first place. Tail tendons tend to be the biggest issue that we use the ultrasound scanner for. Footwalk is often a one leg sport, so a lot of jumping, twisting, turning goes through one tendon. If the athlete has injuries or has weaknesses in different areas, the tendon may not function in its biomechanically correct position. It might develop microtrauma, which is tiny tears to the tendon, which is fine and the body will reheal these if it's given time. If it's a professional athlete and he doesn't get time to heal, then that microtrauma becomes macrotrauma and develops injury. The scanner is very useful for those particular players. It gives a really good idea as to the state of the tendon that you wouldn't be able to identify without without that equipment you can certainly get an idea of how much pain somebody's got just from using your hands but if you can actually get a quantifiable image of what the tendon looks like it's much more useful and much more helpful to our practice. So this is the gym we've got quite a lot of cardiovascular equipment which the injured boys tend to use I'll show you this piece of rehabilitation equipment which we have which is known as the Alter G treadmill a treadmill which allows you to run at a certain percentage of your body weight almost like a reverse vacuum if you like to blow air into a skirt and the increased air pressure in the bottom part of the treadmill actually lifts the player up if you look at a lot of the equipment that we use there's a scientific background and basis behind all of it really and everything that we do do we try and make sure that it's evidence based and that it's scientifically proven to work otherwise there's not much point in doing it there is quite a lot of physics involved and having not taken that as one of my A-levels, I probably did find it quite difficult at first to get my head around some of the concepts. Maybe had I known then what I know now and what, where my career might have taken me, it would have helped me and given me a bit more of a background. Myself, I've done two degrees and two masters uh, and I'm, I'm continuing to, to go on to PhD level. I think that's really important and all the staff here have an out masters levels and something we encouraged. I think everyone's aware football is a growing industry and worth a lot of money now and you can't just turn up and do the job, you need to be qualified.